Hey teachers and parents and educators, people who work in education, um, this video is for you, that's why I didn't say hey kids because this video is not for kids. Quick disclaimer, if you're not over 18 or if you don't work in education, this video is not for you because I'm gonna talk about um, some technical things like the Reggio Emilio approach and how it helps um, us people who work in the in education to deal with things such as competition and growing up too fast so that's what I'm gonna talk about today so yeah if you're not over 18 and if you don't work in education or if you're not a parent this video is not for you but if you are a parent and you are interested in learning about this or if you, you if you're just you know curious and you are an adult i highly advise you to watch this video to the end because i'm gonna talk about some serious things that happen in education and that are i definitely believe are hurting our children nowadays because of silly competition things so that's what i'm gonna talk about today so keep watching okay guys so i'm gonna start talking about the reggio emilia approach and how it's being implemented or people are getting inspired by it lately so the Reggio Emilia approach is an approach um, that deals with children and the children's and the children's a um, hundred languages. The Reggio Emilia approach definitely believes that children are not one-dimensional, and that's definitely what I believe as a teacher. Uh, this approach actually inspired me to teach children and to you know just become a teacher in general because children are one, di one dimensional and this particular approach um, fosters uh, critical thinking fosters um, hack learning fosters um, children just uh, speaking their own way and doing what they want to do and being themselves um, to my mind this is definitely a very artistic way of teaching children um, they are not one-dimensional that's to me that's the approach that definitely connects teaching and art because teaching is an art and learning is an art and if you don't believe that I don't think you're gonna like this approach because you really if you believe that teaching is only a matter of you know just feeding children with learning and that's not really learning that's just you know memorizing things and that how are you gonna use that in your life i guess that when we go to school we learn a lot of things that we're not interested in most of the time and sometimes we ask ourselves how am i gonna use that in my daily life like how am i actually gonna use this um, and that's something that's discouraging to us, I guess it was to me. Well, it definitely was discouraging for me when I was a student and I just realized how, uh, and when I found out about this approach, I was like, this is why I thought all of these things were useless to me, um, uh, because I was taught in a way that was totally one-dimensional like um school like at least when i was growing up i mean now i believe it's different definitely it's different uh but when i was growing up the school was definitely one-dimensional they saw us as the same but we're not the same people are not the same children are not the same people are not the same and we all have different ways of thinking, different ways of seeing the world, um, different environments, like we grow up in different families, we have different beliefs and that and all of that um, have a tremendous impact in education because uh, education is not only uh, teacher-student and that's 
what this approach believes. But yeah, um, uh, also the approach sees the child as responsible for their learning too. So it's not, um, so it's not like just uh, teacher feeding the student the knowledge. It's not like the student goes to school and they eat the books and the knowledge and they, you know, have a microchip um, implementer in the brain. <laughs> implementer in the brain. It's not like that works at all. So that approach believes that student is responsible for their own learning, and also this approach also believes um, in the need to have a really healthy relationship between the teacher and the student. So the teacher is not, uh, you know, uh, some, someone that the students need to be afraid of or, you know, somebody that the student doesn't trust. It's not that at all. It's actually the opposite. It's someone who helps the students grow and the teacher does that about the student see beauty in everything so it's not only about the classroom it's not only about the teacher it's not only about the school it's about the environment the environment is crucial uh, for this approach so yeah um, to sum it up um, this approach is much more than this i'm just saying that it's so amazing to me i'm highly inspired by this and you know just putting the students in you know many different situations and see the girl and see the be curious about things and to me this is so amazing and this approach is fantastic uh, but sometimes um parents and guardians in general they don't feel like kids are learning that way like if kids are um playing outside they're not learning they're just playing they can do that at home right wrong because at least uh first of all even if they lived in an environment with a, like a back a huge backyard and they play like all day every day they wouldn't they still wouldn't have the same experience as in the classroom because in the classroom they have their friends they have the teacher they have songs to sing they have activities to do there they have tasks they have to complete there so it's not just playing around i mean i know it, it looks like i know that it's fun but it's not like just you know playing around it's much more than that and what i mean by that is I, for example, I'm growing some plants with my students where I work and to me it's amazing. Uh, most of the, the parents are like absolutely um, happy about it. They take pictures when we're outside, but um, some parents don't like it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, some parents just, they just don't really care about it. They, they just think that's um, silly and they shouldn't be doing that. But why we do that? Uh, we learn, we play, we learn about the, the cycle of uh, plants, how it grows, the importance to take care of living things and insects. We play, we even play with insects. We, we learn to not kill them, to respect everyone. We sing songs. We learn about plants, we learn about the environment, we feel free and even we eat some food, some of these foods. So to me, this is beautiful. This is something that I, I, I'm really proud of as an educator and I feel like we should, um, I'm just putting it out there, I'm not like complaining about this parent, I'm just saying that I feel sorry for these kids sometimes because most of them, at least where I live, they live in small apartments because I live in, even though I live in the capital city, um, it's a very small city actually, it's an island and it's a capital, but it's an island and it's a small, so there, there are lots of buildings here and kids, most of the times they don't even have, um, they don't have um, contact with any of these things like um, few, uh, you know a few weeks ago uh, I had a new student in my class and I was drawing with chalk uh, 
um, on the patio and so we could play a game so I was riding a river and he was like what's that and I said it's chalk and he said what is that it's like a crayon I said no it's chalk uh, here take some and I gave him some and he was like I've never seen this before I've never seen this before teacher it's uh, amazing like he was so impressed by the colors and how bright it, it was on the floor and he was impressed and he he had never seen one before and I was happy to uh, give him that and I, I you know that's something that moves me so much as a teacher and also something that I really like to talk about here is the competition between parents not much between students because as I see it students are not even they are competitive don't get me wrong they are competitive but they want to play they want to win they are competitive like uh, it's natural for human beings I guess not only for human beings for animals too animals are competitive too but what I mean by that is parents put so much pressure in their kids to grow up fast and to do better than their friends and all of that and that's so sad to me so I talked to you guys a little bit about the approach so now I'm gonna talk about the pressure between um, the pressure that some kids feel um, to grow up fast and how some parents um, and how that can be hurtful for them and also the competition thing so yeah some things that I seen that I've seen before is parents I've seen this like hundreds of times I guess like two parents like having a conversation one saying oh my child um, swims really well and the other says oh my child has swimming lessons too but my child also this is ballet and the other says oh but my child and you know what I mean and that conversation just keeps going and going and going and it doesn't mean that one child is better than the other child it just means that they do a lot of things <laughs> you know that's that basically that's just what it means in general and I feel so bad for them because I want them to be kids and that's hard like sometimes parents um, think like oh my child is doing well like he's acing all the tests so why not maybe uh, skip like a couple of levels and have my kids or so have my 10 year old kid um, in a class full of 14 year olds why not right why not <sighs> I'm sorry I guess this is turning into a rant <laughs> yeah, but this is so frustrating to me because um, kids are only kids once so once you grow up it's all over unless you're a teacher like me and you get to relieve that <laughs> But yeah, once you grow up, it's all over and you don't get to leave this um, phase again. And it's so frustrating to me how these parents, how parents are just, not all the parents, like don't get me wrong, just some. This is just like some parents, like what I have, like the, the amount of support that I have from parents is like, doesn't even compare, you know, this is just some thoughts that I've been having lately <laughs> you know so um, the message that I have I, I, I know this video was definitely like all over the place and crazy and weird and I'm sorry about it I, I hope you you got curious about the Reggio Emilia approach and you can actually um, google that and find out more about it but the message that I have for this is don't pressure your kids they're just kids if they are like too smart if they think the the level is too easy and if the kid is bored if the kid is bored like if the kid is bored not you parent if the kids bored maybe you should um, see the school principal and the teacher and talk to both of them and see the best solution if the kids bored not you 
um, but also don't compare your kids to your friends kids or to other parents kids like don't do that they're individuals they are not the same they're individuals they have a hundred languages remember kids have a hundred languages and they speak differently like if we all if we speak English and we all speak English in a different way and English is one language imagine there are a hundred languages that children have <laughs> what do you think are they the same do they speak this the languages the same way what do you think really so yeah what I mean by that is um, let your children let your children be children don't rush things don't skip levels don't um, make them feel insecure because it does it makes them feel insecure if because it makes them feel competitive let's just stop this competition thing let's just be happy be a family be super fun and colorful <laughs> okay so i'm sorry uh if this video was all over the place i'm not even sure if i'm gonna post this um because it was a little bit of a rant and i'm glad i i got it out of my chest uh, but yeah, I see you next week for a super fun and colorful video and it's gonna be super fun and colorful and it's not gonna be like this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I see you next week for a brand new video. Bye!